It's mine. Well, hello there, stranger. Whew. You're a real bright and shiny one, aren't you? <laughs> I ask you for your name, but sadly you got no mouth to speak with, or hands to shake with, or nose to look down with. So we're gonna have to find another way. See, what you'll find is, even though you're no longer in your body, your body's still inside of you that makes any sense. So, if you understand what I'm saying, um, blink over my hand here. Ooh, well look at that. You're a blinking genius. <laughs> uh, I knew you were special. See all them poor souls down there, lost in the waves? I didn't choose any of them. I chose you. See, I, I just sometimes get a sort of a a hunch, or what's a better word? Notion? A mm, better word than that. Ah! A premonition. A premonition when a soul's worth pulling up. Now, you see that tower out there? The big, scary one? That's where I'm taking you to see the gatekeeper, to be judged. I'm going to present your case, tell her the whole story of your entire life from prow to stir. Now if she's impressed, I get paid the Bitcoin and you get yourself a spot in her magnificent city. If she ain't, well, I eat seagull for dinner again and uh, you, well, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that, because I am the best orator you'll find on these sickly waters. Class A storyteller, believe you me. <laughs> oh, shut up, you trash birds. You had your chances. It wasn't my fault you were no good. Layabouts. Unsatisfactory. Clock watchers. I got some words for you. <laughs> Sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> so sure, maybe I'm not the most verbose storyteller out there, but... I know how to spin a yarn, if I'm given something to work with. And that's where you come in. Your life. You're gonna show it to me. I wanna see exactly what made you so absolutely great. So, just think back to the very beginning. The first thing that you can remember. I'm gonna send you there. But understand, no matter how much you like it, you're not gonna be able to stay, all right? Every time you blink, you're going to jump forward in time. Could be a second, could be five years. That's just how this thing works. Alrighty then, I hope he's ready for this. Now, the next time that you blink, I'm gonna send you back. Now, don't be afraid. And just, Try to enjoy it this time. Look at that sun. We've got a long, beautiful day ahead of us. Why are you smiling like that? get you some seashells, what do you say? You see that big spiky plant over there? That's called an agave. Eleven years from now, 
that plant will die so it can give birth to this tall, amazing tree covered in flowers. We'll have to keep our eyes on that one. The day really slipped away, didn't it? Oh well, days have a tendency to do that, I guess. Now where's the first page of my piece? I can't find it anywhere. Did I put it in here? No. Okay. Go ahead, kid. <laughs> Look at that! There's your little hand. We have to make him do this every birthday. <laughs> That's a great idea. It will really be something to see how he grows. Mommy, don't you? <laughs> Give it time. I'm sure you'll be better than me soon enough. Now we're... Sounds good, honey! I'm sending it to my mentor next week. It has to be perfect. Well, sounds pretty perfect to me. What do you like about it? What do I like about it? I like the music. That's very specific. I also like the person playing it. Yeah. I worry that might have something to do with it. Look at his little face. What do you think he's thinking about? Probably solving the problems of the universe. No, it's not derivative. At least I didn't think it was. Do you think you could tell the other members of the selection committee what I just told you? Right. No, I'm sorry. I, I guess I just put a lot of expectation on this call. Okay, I understand. Thank you for considering my piece, John. It really means a lot. Oh, that's sure a little mess of color. Hey, we do not throw things in this house. If you're mad that you aren't good enough yet, you'll just have to keep working at it. You know, one day you'll be able to paint exactly what you have in your head. You'll be a real artist. Unlike your poor mom. See? That used to be my piano. My dad gave it to me. He loved music. Fled his home country just to have a chance to pursue it. God, he made me practice so much. I hated it at first. I think he hoped to make it further than conducting the high school choir. Never said anything, though. He was what you might call the strong, silent type. I believe I grew up in the snow, and I came all the way out here to the beach. I don't even know how I got here. Your dad got his job and I just came with him, like a human suitcase. Okay, Benny, are you ready to see something really special? I just don't want him to get attached. What? That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, what's wrong with that? We can't keep him, can we? I mean, I'm pretty much definitely allergic, so no, right? No. 
find someone to take him. But while he's here, I say we call him Ernie. <laughs> Little Ernie. Fits him, doesn't it? Oh, he's so cute. He's so sweet. I think. <laughs> now play the C major chord I taught you. Remember? There you go. Doesn't that make you feel happy? Like you just want to jump up and down? Now what about C minor? You remember how to play that one? Very good. Just one note different. But that one sounds sad, doesn't it? Amazing what a difference one little change can make on how a person feels. <gasps> Sort of like me and your little friend on your piano there. She was in grad school studying composition. I never met anyone like her. I just prayed to God I could somehow keep up. I think she liked that I was a professor. Gave me a certain gravitas in her eyes, you know which I very quickly lost. God, she dragged me to so many places. It was wonderful. Where would you want to go if you could only go to one? Well, just remember to put on sunscreen. <laughs> Man, I gave you some unfortunate jeans, didn't I? Luckily, Mom gave you some good ones, so yeah, let's hope they balance each other out. serious piano lessons. Sure, but you know anyone who might be a good teacher for him? What? I, I mean, in the city, sure. Not out here, I don't. I mean, I know someone who might be up to the task. She's very gifted. Richard, no one in this town knows anything. Maybe I'll just have to do it myself. Good idea. I think that settles it. But who's this mysterious woman you're talking about? I hope you're not in love with her. You know, I really was for a while, but then she revealed herself to be much stupider than I thought. Richard, what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <gasps> oh God, I have my interview in five minutes and I completely forgot to feed him. Don't worry, I already did. Oh, thank God. For a moment, I forgot what a great father you are. Focus on the interview, honey. I got this. <laughs> Excuse me, of course, sir. It's all organized into folders sitting ready on my kitchen table. They will literally be on your desk when you get in. What could possibly happen to the files between now and tomorrow morning? We are fine. When's he coming? I'm flying him out in February, remember? You know, I think he was pretty surprised that I could actually afford to do that. Hey, why not? 
you're a working woman now. I guess that's true. Don't let it go to your head, but yeah. Please let the cat know. It's time to use the litter box, though. Baby steps. He's got one eye. This is called a metronome. We use it to measure time so we don't get lost in the music. I want you to start using it before Grandpa comes to visit. You know, my father once told me, when I was about your age, the only way to fight against time is to create a work of genius, which might live on after you're gone. So I asked him, what about your children? Thinking, you know, I might be a work of genius just as I was. He said, yes, I suppose. If you made a work of genius, I could live on through that as well. <laughs> no such luck for me. I haven't seen him in over 10 years. Can you believe that? I wonder if he'll even recognize me. You really need to stay in time with the metronome, okay? Subdivide the time. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. You're off. You're off, Ben. You can't hear that. There you go, buddy. Okay, now keep a firm grip on it, just like that. Oh my. Well, don't think you like that, pal. Sorry, buddy. Turn around, Elle, so we can photograph you. I'm just really behind right now. Why don't you take photos in the backyard? It may not be interesting at first, but if you keep going back out there every day, you'll be surprised by how much it changes. Ernie! Ernie. Buddy! Oh, what if you got eaten by a coyote? My sinuses would be eternally indebted. What did you just say? No, I, I said I'm really worried. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. God, honey, I'm worried too. So you're saying it's a coincidence that it disappears for weeks and then comes back with a huge belly? But Ernie's a boy. And you're sure about that? I thought I was. Uh-huh. That was based on pee hole distance. Say that one more time, sweetie. Pee hole distance from the butt. If it's further away or something, then it's. I'm still not understanding how you let this happen. I don't know. I didn't think about it. It just, it just happened. You just happen to find a stray cat in the alley. We keep it even though I hate cats. And now it just happens to pop out five more. You hated cats. For a professor of signs and symbols, you're really bad at reading them. Okay, that that's funny. That's really witty. I let us keep him for Benny. And I'm happy about that. But I really can't have five cats around the house. It's just not sustainable. Maybe we can put them outside or something. Keeps coloring the grass blue, the ocean green, and then the sky. Are you able to pick up the new book? Yes. The illegalia is a particular interest. I meant Benny's book. Oh, yeah. Got this too. It's extremely expensive, right? Well, no, you know, can't put a price on learning. I mean, they did. And it's stupidly big.
I know it seems impossible that you could ever play something so complex, but just take it one day at a time. Trust me. You're really getting there, honey. Next week, we'll start working on your other hand. Listen to him, Richard. I've been listening to him in that competition. I thought you said competitions took the joy out of playing music. Not if you win. on each side, two screws on each bracket, uh, two washers on each screw, so that means we need eight washers. We have nine. The quiz said find the zero, and he just drew an arrow pointing to it. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I mean, everything is wrong with that. box full by the time I come in there. If you don't play with it anymore, we're getting rid of it. Congratulations, B. Worth the many, I'd assume. Why are you always out here taking photos? You know, if you really want to take a photo of something cool, you should take a photo of this. Chloe! Oh shoot, I think I gotta go. But, um, try to take a photo of me running into my house. I'm pretty fast, so I don't think you'll be able to, but you can try. What the hell? That. Quiet, everyone. Benny's about to play for us. Wow, L, he's unbelievable. My God, I didn't realize our head of accounting was raising a musical prodigy. Didn't you used to be a composer yourself, L? No, I don't know if I'd say that. But you used to write your own music, right? Yeah, but I haven't done that in years. I mean, not since he was four or five years old. And, and what do you do, Richard? He's a professor. Of what? Well, no one really knows. No, I mean, what's his field? Uh, it's maritime archaeology. Uh, very cool. Hmm. But no one really knows what it means. Mm, unknown legend. <laughs> it's kind of one of those professions that stops the dinner party short. Oh, uh, okay. More wine? I'll have a little more wine, please. Yeah, what a show.
the class is world history. My name is Mr. Isaac. The class will be broken up in hey, you. minutes. Look on your desk. I wrote you something. This is a quote. I want each of you to write it down. Not doodle on the sidelines. Not stare off into space. Okay. Now I will go on to the next slide. Chloe, tell me. What did the quote say? Um, right, I definitely know this. You were taking notes, weren't you, Chloe? Oh, yes, of course. Come on, dude. Come on. So those who do not remember the past, repeat the past. That's right, right? Indeed it is. Though I'd prefer you to answer without the help of your boyfriend next time. If we do not keep an accurate account of the past, we are destined to embarrass ourselves in all sorts of ways. And now, on to what you've all been waiting for. You broke my no talking Great. rule, but I asked Assessments. you to, so 60%. I guess I have to let you live. Those are tests and quizzes. Class work. That's work we do about our class. Participation, 20%. I will give you a moment to write this all down. I tried to convince your father not to buy you that thing, but he insisted. Half suspect he bought it for himself. Guys are pretty cute though. I will admit that. I've definitely seen you next door, but I didn't realize you guys have become friends. Oh sure. We sit together in history class. I don't know what I'd do without old Benny. Very sweet. Thank you for playing this game with him. Your dad just thanked me for hanging out with you? That's a very interesting detail. Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. I really want this one. Maybe I'll use Tickle Stick. Whoa, that's a pretty good drawing. You should draw pictures of more different stuff. Not me though. I'll actually kill you if you try to draw me and you saw what I'm capable of in your backyard. Benny, why did you draw me? You're not good enough. I look so ugly. Ugh. It's called a magnet school. It's about an hour away in a town called Burton. I know the change can be scary, but I just want you to go in and meet the dean I spoke with. You know, life can take you to some incredible places if you're really, really good at something. So what do you think, Benjamin? You think you could excel in that sort of an environment? Sorry, he gets very shy. Oh, not to worry. If he's as gifted as you say he is, shyness is no problem. Why don't you two come back closer to the end of the year for an audition? We'll get a few pieces that you can have him start learning. I'm eager to hear what your son is capable of. So, I understand you were a musician yourself. Where did you study? Oh, Berkeley. But I was in the composition department. Ah, uh, and who did you study under? John MacDonald. Hmm. I understand he's very difficult. Yes. Taciturn is the word I used. Taciturn. Yes. People have described me that way, if you can believe it. Oh, I would never say that about you. Thank you. I wouldn't either. <clears throat> you seem very warm. Very caring.
As you can see, there are some very fast runs in there and a lot of stuff I've not taught you properly yet. So no pressure. I just want you to try and we can see if you start enjoying it. Just like to see you really rise to the occasion just this once. I wish I had the option of going to a school like that when I was your age. I wouldn't be working this boring job or living in this boring town, I'll tell you that. What was that? Was that the piece? What is going on with you these days? I barely know whose kid you're supposed to be. Don't answer that, Ben. You can talk to your friend after you practice. Oh my God. Is she really calling you again? What, is she obsessed with you? So listen, I found a construct. What are you doing? I explicitly asked you not to pick up the phone. Oh, he's fine. Go talk to her. Oh, what do you know about anything that's going on right now? Okay, you know, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't raise your voice like that. Well, then don't stick your nose into things that you're completely checked out of. Okay. Oh, man. Did I just I cause a fight out, with your parents? I actually think I'm sorry, dude. Out means but you should also cherish this moment. My mom and dad used to fight, and I would always hate it. But now I actually miss it a lot. Anyway, so basically across the board, crustacean types perform well against mollusk types. So we got to be leaning on lobster a lot more in these reef battles. Then, once we get to the trench, will be facing what they call craniate types, so chondric types will be what we need. But we haven't even gotten any of those yet. Anyway, it's all pretty complicated, so we can go over it in history class tomorrow. But listen, I definitely don't want you to play without me. But if you do end up playing without me, spend as much time as possible in the Red Reef, because that's supposedly where you can find these chondric types, which we're for sure going to need. But we'll talk more tomorrow, okay? Okay, I gotta go. Anubis, in the presence of Ma'at, who you remember is the goddess of truth and justice, would weigh the deceased soul against a feather, determining whether it was worthy of entering into her land of the dead. And what if they are deemed unworthy? Well, you can see that ugly fur ball under the hey, scale. Mr. Kid. She's got Look at yes, it. that's a she. The head of a crocodile, fur of a lion, see, and the body of a hippopotamus. Though I would not say that to her face. Now, as you can see, she is ready to devour any of the deceased who do not pass judgment. <laughs> sort of like me. Ew, why is he so scared looking? Okay, I'll call so you I'm when I'm leaving my house. You better pick up my call, dude. Right now. I'm slightly worried about having him change schools just as he's starting to make friends. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only reason she keeps coming here is to play that game you bought for him. Okay, listen, I don't claim to understand the motives of children. Benny has a chance here. A real chance to be really good at something. I mean, no offense at all. But I don't think you actually really understand what that is. Lights out. You need to be rested for tomorrow. Memory consolidates when you're asleep. 
So if you go to sleep now, you will awaken a master. Trust me. Richard, tell your son to turn the lights off. Danny, mom says turn the lights off. Not mom says, you say. Danny. Wow, didn't think you'd actually pick up. I'm a sticky for a baby, I apologize. Okay, so meet me out in the alley in T minus now, okay? Chloe, out. You know, I'm really glad you're here. There's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Or to get off my chest. Okay. I don't think Conksters is actually a really good game. My cousin Yoon, he was in town this weekend, and he was explaining how it's actually a ripoff of a really good Japanese game. He calls it a cash grab. So I'm sorry that I made you like it because it's actually a terrible game. But I also think that if it was a really good game, maybe we wouldn't have enjoyed playing it as much. We would have been so focused on how good it was and not the feelings we had while we were playing it. Like my favorite vegetable is a tomato, but Yoon thinks that they're the grossest ever. And you're probably the least popular boy in the school, but I also like hanging out with you the most which was also something I wanted to talk to you about. I like hanging out with you a lot, which is weird because after what happened with my mom, I never like hanging out with anyone. So this has been a big surprise for me this year in a lot of ways. I think I like that you let me talk. My cousin never lets me talk. My dad does, but I can tell he's not really listening. Probably didn't sleep at all, out in the cold all night. You're already feeling sick, aren't you? It's okay, you still got this. I mean, all the practice had to count for something. Maybe just try and close your eyes now and get a little sleep on the way over. I'm going to play the recording so the sound of mastery can seep into your subconscious a little, okay? Close your eyes, Ben. I'm going to be there soon. In your own time, Benjamin, we are very excited to hear That's enough. So, Benjamin, uh, why don't we plan on having you come back next year again, once you've had a bit more time to practice, yes? As you know, Burton isn't the right fit for every student, and I wish you the best of luck on your path, wherever it may take you, okay? Maybe I pushed you too hard. Maybe I turned into my own father. I don't know. You have to find something to focus on. The world isn't very kind to people who aren't really good at something. We want him home from school for a while. Just until this nasty thing clears. Hey El, would you mind taking a quick walk with me down to my office? There's a small clerical thing I need you to look at before I can let you two go. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be right back, Benny, okay? Just maybe five minutes, kiddo, okay? The 
such a crucial time in his development. He shouldn't be confined to his room. Yeah, what? We have... This isn't video game time. I want you to figure out something actually productive to do while you're home from school. It's a letter. You are not here to learn to be painters. You are here to learn to be artists. And although I was hired to teach you, it is a sham. There is no teaching art. So don't just sit there slack, Jod. Make art, you ponies. Oh. How very wacky and fun these are. It's very zany, very kitty. Lucky for you, the world is always in need of more greeting card artists. There you go, Mr. Brin. Feel 
feel each shape. I want you all to take a long look at what Mr. Brin has done here. You see, he has reached down deep within himself and created a masterpiece. ironic sincerity of this piece is so sincerely ironic. He's flipped the discourse so thoroughly, I'm actually dizzy. I know that lots of agents gave you lots of cards, and it all probably feels weird and alienating and the opposite of what being a starving artist is supposed to feel like. But if I can teach you one thing, it's that if opportunity knocks, you open the door. Making a living isn't selling out. I wish I had thought of it that way. Benjamin! Marvelous show last week. Truly stunning. I've never been prouder. Uh, one little thing. A birdie told me that Elba Preston Hoover gave you her card. I want you to cut that card into little pieces and feed it to an alley cat. Elba Pressenhuber is not in the business of the arts. Elba Pressenhuber is in the business of business. And you, child, you are no business man. You are an artist. Live like one. Don't worry. You're not selling your soul. Well, look at that. You've crumpled my contract. <laughs> uh, whatever you want, kid. Sure, you got talent. But what's talent? <laughs> Listen, I wish you the best of luck, okay? Okay, we're done. To being a difficult artist, the best of us are. Ah, this is divine. So, now that you've grown your wings, tell me, young master, where will you fly? May I suggest somewhere abroad? This American air can be stifling. Ah. That's enough for me. 
Now, you'll hear from the person who I believe is the single thing in the world my wife was most proud of. Her magnum opus, so to speak. Huh. I think you all know who I'm talking about. Benny? You ready to come up here? Say something. What's wrong? Why aren't you talking? Hey, you. As you know, I talk to big, very important people every day. And there's one thing that everybody is asking me. What's going on with Benjamin Brin? And what am I supposed to say? That I haven't heard from my star pupil in six months? This is getting ridiculous. You are a snake. You are a fraud. But worst of all, Benjamin, you are a little tease. I have told the world that Benjamin Brain is a genius. I have told the world that Benjamin Brain is silent because Benjamin Brain is hard at work creating his greatest work yet. But you are doing nothing! The world has forgotten you, Benjamin! They have moved on! And I... I have moved on too. You have broken my heart. Take whatever you want. If your mother gone, I'm hoping to finally live without all the clutter. <laughs> ah, I'm just so glad you got to speak to her one last time. I mean, I know she told you not to pick up the phone, <laughs> but, well, I'm just so happy that you did. She just wanted you to focus on your work. That was the only thing that mattered to her. What's that? What's so fascinating, son? Look, it's unbelievable, Benny. It's like she's standing in the room with us. Like I can see her in the paint. I can feel her. My god, I can't believe this. It's been years. I, I just walked through the entire show. It's unbelievable. I'd love to walk through it again with you. 
I mean, if you were down for that. I just can't believe that my entire childhood, I was living next to a bona fide genius. I should have guessed it. I mean, with all those little drawings you did. Remember when you still drew my portrait even when I begged you not to? Cut, you were such a little jerk back then. And your mom. I always heard her playing piano from next door, but I didn't know she wrote the actual music. She was a genius. Like mother, like son, I guess. Hey, so not to be forward, but what are you doing after this? Maybe we could get a drink or something? I'd really love to catch up. I, I can't believe everything that's happened to you. I want to hear all about it. Now would you look at that? <laughs> I cannot believe my luck. You finally hit the jackpot, Flapjack. With all the nobody nothings dying every day, you finally sink your hook into a... Whoa! Well, there you are. Well, hello, sir. If I had realized I would have cleaned up, I'm just used to fishing up a different class of soul. <laughs> I mean, sure, I've had scientists, a couple college athletes here or there, but whew, an internationally renowned painter? <laughs> the gatekeeper's going to eat you up. Hey, speaking of that, why don't we give your story a test run? Maybe you help me out the word choice, since, you know, I'm still working on that. See if I'm getting all the strokes right, the proper composition, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Forget about it. All right, here we go. Gatekeeper! Before you stands the soul of a great man. Now, would you describe yourself as a, a happy kid or a lonely one? A, uh, a jovial child or a solitary one? <laughs> hey, not bad. His childhood was a happy one, growing up in a loving home raised by loving parents in a quaint village by the sea. And, uh, what did you say your mom was? A composer or an accountant? His mother was a composer who, with the need to support her family, took a job as an accountant. How would you describe her as a teacher? More encouraging or demanding? Kind of like your champion or, or more like a taskmaster. Therefore, as his piano teacher, she was ever encouraging, teaching him to recognize the greatness within. And how about that neighbor girl, huh? What was she to you? Was she your best friend or first love? Now be honest here. Now don't be bashful, man. You can tell me. But on the eve of his big audition, he completely dropped the ball, staying up all night with his first love and blowing it the next day. Now, from that moment forward, his mother gave up on him. She knew he didn't have what it took to be a truly great musician. But little did she know, she just picked the wrong medium, right? See, when he was 12 years old, he got sick. And he had to stay inside for an entire year. And in that year, he rediscovered a talent he'd forgotten painting. 
Sure, he loved finger painting as a child. Color and shape were the first languages he learned to speak. But for the first time, he saw it in a more serious light. He was accepted into an exclusive art school where he caught the eye of an esteemed professor who launched his work into the national spotlight. Now be quiet. With expectations on his career mounting, he stalled himself into bankruptcy, which turned out to be a blessing, for it wasn't until he returned home to the house he grew up in that he began work on what would ultimately be considered his masterpiece. I said shut up, you, you scum dolls, you mucky fowls. Get it! I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I'd assume as much anyway. I should probably tell you. Those things, they're not regular gulls. They're liar birds. They're what becomes of souls who try to lie to the gatekeeper. And once they try that, they're never allowed near her city again. I get to feeling bad for not defending them right, so they just stay on with me. Living reminders of my oratory shortcomings. Oh, yeah, good thinking. I'll be back to get you once I'm done with this one. Hopefully you won't be seeing him again. <laughs> You're a flea bit sap, you know that? Just look at him. Poor fool doesn't know what he's in for. Don't think that I haven't dealt with people like you. You're ashamed of something. Something so terrible, you're trying to blink right past it. Because if the gatekeeper knew, she'd have to dream up fresh new hells to punish someone as worthless as you. And I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're the rottenest soul that I ever fished out of that black muck. And I should have thrown you back and sanitized my paw as soon as I laid eyes on ya. But it's too late for that. We're in this together. And the gatekeeper, she'll see right through your fake lies as if they were glass. So I'm gonna ask you again to start from the very beginning. And this time, I want the truth. This ain't a schoolyard staring contest, buddy. Now you best close those beady little eyes of yours before we run out of time. Not this. Now play the C major chord I taught you. Remember? Come on, keep blinking. I, I, I haven't found it yet. Doesn't that make you feel happy? Like you just want to jump up and down? You know, my father once told me. This. Stay here. What did your mother hear on that phone call?
I'm getting it. Hello? Yes, of course. This is Elle, his daughter. <gasps> oh. Oh, what see. is it? She knew she hadn't yet lived up to her father's expectations. And now, she never could. Let's keep going. You really need to stay in time with the metronome, okay? You were a prodigal talent. I get it. Let's move. This will be eternally indebted. What did you just say? This isn't a trip down memory lane. I need you to stay focused. Yes, I understand about the cat. Let's keep going. The death of those cats must have taught you a terrifying lesson that simply being alive wasn't enough. So then you went to work to make yourself sensational. Listen to him, Richard. I'm enlisting him in that competition. I thought you said competitions took the joy out of playing music. Not if you win. about who you're going to become. I get all this. We need to move. Hey, Elle, would you mind taking a quick walk with me down to my office? This Come on, keep blinking. I, I, I haven't found it yet. Let you two go. We can focus him. Make sure he's staying engaged. Can you please try to speak a little softer? What's the point? What do you mean? What's the point? What does that mean? What's the point of any of it? If he's never going to get any better. Okay. Let's not say that. Okay? We know we don't mean it. I know I don't. I know. I mean, what if he heard one of us saying something like that? I'd never forgive myself. I... It's okay. He's asleep. But it's okay. I see. You got sick. You howled at the moon. At the top of your lungs. sick for a long time, weren't you? Sicker than healthy kids are supposed to get? Well, no matter how painful it gets, I need you to remember. We're almost at the end of this. I promise.
This isn't video game time. I want you to figure out something actually productive to do while you're home from school. Try writing with it. Well, hello, Benny. <laughs> it was your grandfather's, but I used it in college to write lyrics. <laughs> exactly. It was very artsy. Actually, I was just good at fooling your dad. Made him think I was some kind of genius. Why don't you write the story of your life so far? And then what you're going to do once you get better. That's the story I want to hear. This is wild. You really got into this, didn't you? Oh, here I am. But on the eve of his big audition, he completely dropped the ball, staying up all night with his first love and blowing it the next day. First love? Okay, Benny. And you know, we really could have just slept on the beach another night. But I'm also glad we didn't because, well, another night wouldn't be the same night, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, back to the story. You are going to be in there for about 30 minutes, so try to get comfortable. doing great, buddy. Just a little longer, okay? Knock, knock. You're going to be so annoyed with me, but I couldn't help but overhear Chloe reading loud from what I think was your story the other night. I know, I know. I promised myself I wouldn't eavesdrop, but I would really love to read it if you'd let me. What do you say? You know I'm such a big fan of anything you do. and tell him you loved it. I'm sorry, I just can't. I just... Not right now. Okay, don't worry. Just go to bed. I'll talk to you. Hey, B. Just want you to know that Mom loved your story. She's just... You know, I think it was just very emotional for her to read. I, I, I thought it was great. I mean, look at this. His childhood was a happy one. Growing up in a loving home, raised by loving parents in a quaint village by the sea. <laughs> I'm certainly glad you feel that way. But what I want to know is, where'd you learn to write so well? All those cool words! It reads like Dickens! <laughs> really just very cool stuff, kiddo. You should be very proud, okay? Okay. Love you, buddy.
if he's ever in pain, all he needs to do is press that red button and the drug will administer itself. Thank you so much. You know, I know my wife would normally want to thank you herself. No, I understand it hits mothers the hardest, this sort of thing. Thank you for understanding. It's been, uh, it's been a rough one. Hey, Eddie. Yeah, hey man, it's Richard. Listen, I know Elle's been missing in action, but I just want you to understand things have taken a really bad turn here. Yeah, no, that's not going to be possible. To be honest, your whole tone is pissing me off right now. Yes, I understand you have a business to run. It's a very <laughs> cliche thing to say to me in a time like this. Okay, well, well, then I guess all I can say is screw you too. I said, screw you too. Yeah, man, that's all I got. Hey, this isn't funny, you know. What, you're too scared to talk to me? Well, just so you know, I know you're faking. Because if you were really sick, like actually sick, you'd have told me already. I happen to actually... Hey, Benny. Buddy. Did you just throw something? Kind of sounded like you threw your cell phone at the wall. You know, your mom's not mad at you. She's just... Well, she's tired. Really tired, I think. You know, it's okay if you did throw your phone at the wall. Hell, I mean, I wanted to throw my phone at the wall a minute ago. You know what? Maybe I will throw my phone at the wall. <laughs> you ready? Ha <laughs> ha! Did you hear that, Benny? <laughs> yeah, we should throw things more often. It's cheaper than therapy, I can tell you that much. I remember when you were just four years old. Mom was going through a pretty tough time. I mean, not as tough as now, but yeah, her music had been rejected and she's having trouble adjusting to her quiet little life out here. And I feared that yeah, I was losing her. But then you played this on the piano and your little hands reaching up for the keys. She just couldn't believe how gifted you were. And once she heard that, well, it was like you brought her right back to me. So, I was wondering if maybe you could do that trick again. Try closing your eyes. See if you can remember. How did you figure out how to play that? Keep playing, B. She's listening.
just so happy she's here. We've got to show this cat some real love. She's been through more than we can even imagine. Oh, her poor fur. Richard, we have to give Ernie a haircut, okay? I'm getting her a sashimi plate. <laughs> what? What? I think she more than deserves it. Oh, I think you're right. Like, she didn't even care to visit? No, I mean, I don't think he's told her. And you're just letting that be? I don't know her step. You know how Benny is. She lost her mother a year ago. You knew that, right? No, but what does that have to do with... Okay, do we have her dad's number? I don't know. Check the book. Okay, I'm calling now. Honey... You do realize this is really nothing special to me. I've seen this all before. I, um, I was thinking about what you said in the story the other day and how I reacted to it. I feel kind of bad. I shouldn't have done that, but. Hey, what are you looking at? Don't look up there. Look at me. I'm talking to you. I want to give you something. But I think I don't want to be in the room when you see what it is. So maybe if you close your eyes, I can give it to you and I'm going to leave. Close your eyes now, okay? Something new I'm working on. So you're writing again? Ah, it's just a melody that came to me. It feels good to play it. It's sad. Yeah, well, that would make sense. But do you like it? I mean, yeah. I love everything you do. What do you like about it? Ah, uh, not this old trap. Go on. I'm waiting. Well, it made me feel like... Like... Like if the unspeakable darkness I'm carrying can be so well expressed, maybe it's not so unspeakable. Nailed it, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, that was pretty good.
It's okay. Benny, I understand. There's no need to show me anymore. No, Richard, it's like I can't breathe. It's like there's this clamp on my chest. I know. It's okay. You can come back to me now. You have to do something. Richard, I can't breathe. I feel like I can't breathe. It's okay, Benny. Just close your eyes. You know, for a while now, I've wondered if I'm just not a good enough storyteller. If I just don't have grand enough words, can't tell grand enough stories. But grand words and stories, I think they may be overrated. I know just what to tell her. Watch for her now. I've seen the gatekeeper take many forms depending on the soul I bring her. But once you see her, you'll know. Believe me. I should go get ready. Don't worry. We got this. I think. Wish me luck. Gatekeeper, before you sits the soul of a child who died before he could grow old. That means she's ready to hear your story. You know, I never told you how much I loved your story really so imaginative and the person you wrote about is such an interesting and intense guy my only issue was well I didn't like him very much so I wanted to read you something I wrote for you which is about the Benny I've known for 11 years now it's called The Great Life of Benjamin Brin. Benjamin Brin was born into an ordinary home, to an ordinary mother and father in a small town by the sea. His mother was a composer, or at least that's what she dreamed she'd be. So when her own dreams didn't pan out, she began to dream for him. But then, when he was just 11 years old, He got sick and was forced to stay inside for an entire year. And in that year, he began to worry that he hadn't lived enough. So he made up a story of the great life he thought he wanted to live, which only made him forget the great life he already had, how he had filled a new home with light and joy and promise, how he met a girl, his neighbor, who felt all alone in the world and made her feel okay again. And how, even when he was sick, he still gave his parents hope. How he reminded them exactly who they were after they had almost forgotten. So when he knew he was going to go, he was okay. Because he'd already lived a great life, a full life. And he was everything he needed to be, just as he was. Close your eyes now, and keep them closed. (laughs) She's gonna let you in. Go on. You know what to do. I 
is he smiling like that? It must be somewhere that he likes. Thank mm-hmm. you.